Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this video, we're gonna solve this system right here. So if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you should be able to do this problem. And to uh, make this an extra exciting problem, I turned this into a multiple choice little kind of pop quiz here. So one of the answers, A, B, or C, is correct. Now, if you think you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, and then of course we're gonna solve this uh, system. And we're also gonna talk about um, how valuable it is uh, when you see a multiple choice math question on a quiz or, exam, uh, or an exam. This is a real advantage, and I'll talk about uh, why in just one second. Also, if you need uh, math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Check out my math help program. Program You can find it at tcmathacademy.com. Uh, the link will be in the description below. And also, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer. Is it A, B, or C? Well, let's go ahead and see the answer. The answer is option C. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got that right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A+. Plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you know uh, you know how to solve a basic linear system in algebra. I'm pretty sure they'll be very impressed with that knowledge. Okay, so let's uh, get into this, but the way we're gonna uh, talk about this particular problem is starting off uh, by recognizing this is a multiple choice question, okay? which means even if you didn't know how to do this system, right? Let's say, you know, you're having a tough day and you're like, oh, I forgot how to do this problem. If you have the, you know, a multiple choice scenario and you're dealing with equations and algebra, you can reverse engineer this. You can kind of just go through a process of elimination to find the right answer. So how does this work? Well, I'm gonna show you this right now. Well, a couple things though first. Let's just talk about these solutions, okay? What uh, do they represent? Okay, well, let me kind of just get into this a little bit here. So when we're talking about linear systems in algebra, this right here is a line, okay? It's an equation of a line, so a linear equ uh, equation. This is what we call a, a linear system, okay? There's kind of a lot of technical uh, language to this, but effectively, um, you could graph this line. Okay, hopefully you know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, you need to improve in your algebra, but you can certainly graph this line and you can graph this line. And what we're looking for in terms of the solu a solution to a linear system is the point of intersection between these two lines. And that point, of course, would be an X, Y ordered pair point. So this is what these points here represent. This would be X, this would be Y. So hopefully, you understood that, and now if you understood this, you'd be like, oh, okay, maybe he's kind of giving me a hint here in order to use the answers to determine which one is right or wrong. Let's suppose uh, you said, I think B is correct, okay? Let's suppose you said, eh, I'm gonna select B, but before you select B, let's check this answer, two, six, okay, into this equation, and this is the way it would work, okay? Let me go ahead and erase this right here, and anytime, again, you have a multiple choice question. In mathematics, you need to be using the answers to help you identify, just by a process of elimination, which is the right or wrong uh, answer. Okay, this is a very, very powerful uh, thing to keep in mind on tests and quizzes. So here again, two, six, uh, this is our potential answer. Two is x is equal to two, and six, y is equal to six. Again, we're talking about an x, y order pair here. So what we need to do is just plug in this X and Y right here. Here's a Y, so we'll plug in a six for that. And then right here for this X, we'll plug in a two and we'll do the same thing in this equation. And then all we're going to do is see if uh, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. In other words, when we plug in these numbers for these variables, does, does it create a true statement? So let's take a look at this first one here. Y equals minus X minus two. So Y again is six. So uh, we're gonna have six is equal to negative, uh, x again is two, so it's gonna be uh, negative two minus two. So when we do this math, we're gonna have six, is that equal to negative two minus two, which is negative four? Is that a true statement or a false statement? This is a false statement. 
So all you need to do really is to check one. If you check one equation, you, you come up with a false statement, this answer is incorrect. But let's suppose this was true. Okay, let's say, oh yeah, this is true. Now, does that mean that you don't have to check the other equation? No, that does not, does, that's not what it means. So when uh, you are checking a solution as a potential you know, correct answer in a system or any other type of equation, make sure you check it into all the things that you're dealing with. In this case, we're dealing with two equations, so we gotta plug that information, two, six in this particular uh, case, into the respective variables, and when we do that, we're gonna end up with another statement that's incorrect, negative 16 is not equal to 18. So again, you know, if you're taking any sort of like, let's say a final exam and you're like, oh, I forgot how to do this, but it's multiple choice, you always use the answers to help you through a process of elimination. Very, very powerful technique. Okay, so let's suppose though, this wasn't a um, multiple choice question. So what are you gonna have to do? Well, you're just gonna have to use your algebra knowledge and skills to figure this thing out. So how can we solve a basic linear system? Basically, there are there's other techniques, but at the algebra one level, pre-algebra, algebra one level, you learn three of um, main techniques. The first is called the graphing method, where effectively you actually graph this line and you graph this line on a nice kind of graph paper and you'll look and see uh, where the point of intersection is at. Now, that's assuming these two lines, in fact, do cross. Uh, not all systems are going to have a solution. Okay, that's a whole other different topic. But anyways, you have this graphing method. Now, this is kind of a basic method, but it's an, uh, not really a practical method. So you want to use two algebraic methods, okay? The first being the substitution method, and the second being the elimination method. The elimination or linear combination method, they just basically the same thing. Uh, they go by two different names. Okay, so in this particular uh, situation, I'm going to use the substitution method. The linear combination method could uh, work uh, just, uh, just as well. But in this particular case, it's so easy to um, use the substitution method because this, the way the system is written, it's just like all set up perfectly for us to use the substitution method. So here's the, always the objective when you're trying to solve a system in algebra, basic two variable linear system, is notice here we have two variables in both of these equations. Here I have y and x, here I have x and y. So what we wanna do is try to write one equation with one variable. It could be all x's or all y's, it doesn't make a difference, uh, but we have to get one equation with one variable so what we're going to do here is replace this y right there uh, with this expression right here, okay? Because so, y is equal to minus x minus two. That's what this says, okay? So we kind of um, have the option. Hey, we can either write a y or we can write a minus x minus two because we're saying these are the same thing. But notice this minus x minus two, this has x and this has x. So if we, uh, we replace this y with this expression right here, we'll end up with one equation with all x's and then we can solve for x. And uh, that's really going to allow us to just to kind of solve this thing in a nice smooth way. So let's go and see how this works right now. Okay, so again, we're gonna replace this y with this expression right here, minus x minus two. So the way we do that is always use parentheses. That's not kind of obvious, um, yeah, you know, because this doesn't have any parentheses, but I'm telling you right now, anytime you're using the substitution method and you have one variable and it's a sum of difference, always just put parentheses around that. That's really going to help you out making, uh, making an error when it comes to solving this one equation. Uh, and you'll see this in a second. All right, so we're replacing this y with this right here. So we end up with x minus three. Okay, that three right there times not y, but what y is equal to, that is that minus x minus two is equal to 18. Okay, so at this point, we need to solve this equation right here. And if you didn't have um, this expression in parentheses, you could very well be confused in terms of uh, not applying the distributor property. Okay, in other words, if you just kind of put that expression like this, because this was where y was at, that's going to con really confuse you in terms of, of what to do. Okay, so to, uh, to solve this particular equation right here, what we have to do is take this negative three and apply the distributor property. All right, so again, uh, some of these things are not going to be in the problem. You're going to have to add them in. 
uh, you know, i.e. these parentheses and grouping symbols. The only way you're going to know how to do this is one, you know, listening to me and two, most importantly, practice, practice, practice. Okay. So it kind of becomes a habit. All right. So let's go to do this right now. So we have um, X. Now this is going to be negative three times this negative X, negative three times negative uh, X is going to be a positive three X or negative one X, so negative three times this negative two is a positive six. Okay, so let's continue. So now we're gonna add like terms. I have one X plus three X, that's four X plus six is equal to 18. Now I'm gonna subtract six from both sides of the equation. I'm not showing all the steps here. Uh, because, uh, you know, I'm just trying to kind of keep this nice and tidy. But uh, with your work, uh, you should show that. Matter of fact, let me just put it in here like so. So here's what you should show. Maybe I should show it as well, right? You know, I try to uh, make this nice and kind of tidy. But anyways, this is what you would have. You, you want to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. So we end up with 4x is equal to 12. So to solve 4x, we need to divide both sides of the equation by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. X is equal to 3. Okay, so now what do we do with that answer? Well, uh, we can go back to either one of these equations in the system, the original system. We know that X is equal to 3, so to figure out what Y is equal to, we just replace any one of these X's here with 3. This equation here is the easiest because it's totally set up for us. It's going to tell us what Y is if we know what X is. And, of course, we know X is 3. So y is equal to minus x or minus 3 minus 2. So minus 3 minus 2 is negative 5. y is equal to negative 5. So there you go. There's the final answer. 3, negative 5. Remember, this is x. This is y. That's the point where those two lines would intersect. And uh, again, if you were kind of going through a process of elimination with the multiple choice questions, you know, you could have easily said, okay, you know, this one is wrong, this one's wrong, and then you check this one, and, oh, that one works. Uh, you know, but, uh, again, not every single question in mathematics is going to be a multiple-choice question. I can tell you right now, anytime you see a multiple-choice question, and I know I'm being redundant here, but I really want to stress this, anytime you see that and you also see an equation problem, it's like 90% sure that you're going to be able to use uh, the answers to figure out um, the correct answer. Now, the only thing I would say as a caveat, you might have an option where it says none of the above. Uh, but, you know, anyways, you should still use your answers to help guide you, especially if you're confused on how to solve a problem. Okay, so if you need help with anything systems, I teach systems in my pre-algebra course. I teach more about systems in Algebra 1 and even more in Algebra 2. So that's uh, some suggestions on those of you that I want to improve in systems. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on systems. But if this particular video was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.